everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here with Dyer Supplier to have some fun in the sun and dye some yarn. In past tutorials I have demonstrated how we can use our stovetop, a steamer basket, or even the microwave to set color on yarn. But if you're willing to lengthen your time scale a bit, you can set up your colors in a jar, set it outside in the sun, and over the course of a nice, warm, sunny day, you can set the color and create a really beautiful colorway at the same time. Using a longer time scale allows dyes to spread out a little bit more, and layering things compact in a jar is just so much fun because just like a tie-dye t-shirt you're not quite sure what it'll look like once you remove it. In this video we are going to use Dyer Supplier Silvery Sock. This sort of grayish yarn is jam-packed with silver solina which gives it this beautiful really sparkly finish and just felt very appropriate for some sun dyeing today. Uh, this yarn is 60% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 20% silver stellina. I pre-soaked our silvery sock yarn in some plain tap water overnight, but around 30 minutes to an hour would be sufficient. Today we are going to take our pre-soaked yarn and layer it in this one quart mason jar with some dry acid dye powder. Then we are going to sort of mix a little bit of pastel color to pour on top and then as that liquid goes on it'll also help that the powder dyes spread out creating a really unique colorway. And then we'll take it outside and set this color in the sun. Whenever we are dealing with dry acid dye powders or any type of dye powders I will be wearing a respirator mask, gloves, and safety glasses. The colors we are going to play with today are Jacquard Bright Yellow, Sky Blue, Teal, and Royal Blue. You can find these colors and the complete collection of all 40 colors of Jacquard Acid Dyes on the Dyer Supplier website. All of the tools and equipment we are using today are dedicated for dye and are never used for food. I have gently squeezed out most of the uh, pre-soaked liquid from our yarn. And I'm going to carefully sort of place one end into our mason jar. And now we are going to start adding some colors. I'm going to start with the sky blue. So I'm going into the jar with a dedicated dye spoon, taking just a tiny bit of powder and sort of tapping it on to the yarn like I would do speckling. I'm going to flip it around and tap a little bit more on the other side. This does not need to be symmetrical at all. Put that down and take a little more of this color. This is the sky blue. Tapping it in there. And you can take your spoon and wipe that last little bit of color off on your yarn or you could decide to just set it aside. With a fresh utensil, I'm taking a little bit of royal blue, tapping some, I'm gonna use my finger to help, on that same side, but then shift the color over, and tap some here on this other side. The colors will spread in a really, really fun and a unique way. And then again, just wiping the rest of that color on my fork on the yarn. I don't want to dip a damp utensil into the container. Now I'm going to grab some teal. You can see I'm really focusing on tiny, small amounts of dye. Um, but again, it can go heavier in places and lighter in others. The way that this all layers within the jar will ultimately be fairly random. And then the liquid that we add next will push some of these colors more into the jar. Tiny bit more teal. And I'm going to go back into our royal blue. 
which I don't remember how similar or different the royal blue is to uh, the sky blue at the moment. But I do want to grab a tiny bit more of the sky blue, which I believe is just is overall less pigmented, but I don't remember if the tone, how different the tones of the blues are from one another. So, but that is something that is will be fun and that we will see with this and tap the rest of that yarn in. I just want to put some sky blue on top. There. There is still no acid in here at all. So while with the dampness, some of these colors might start to um, dissolve a little bit, they are not about to strike. Right here, I have one cup of tap water, and I'm going to start by adding one teaspoon of the Jacquard Bright Yellow 1% Stock Solution. So this is just five milliliters of color, but you can see that we've got a really beautiful yellow here. And I'm going to take this sort of pastel yellow, which does look really bright, but fundamentally it's not a ton of dye, and start pouring it onto our yarn. Again, there's no acid in here yet. That will come in a moment, but by adding some water with no acid in this first step, that is allowing some of our colors to spread out a bit more. I have another cup of water and I am going to add two tablespoons of white vinegar and to this I'm going to add another teaspoon of our bright yellow color. Doing it this way will leave a tiny bit less white behind on the final yarn, but ultimately that is all a matter of preference. And if you don't have a stock solution already mixed, um, since we're playing with powders anyway, you could have just taken a tiny bit of powder, dissolved it in the water for um, a pastel or a brighter color. It all depends on what you want to create. And I am pouring that on. Now, we definitely now have more acid towards the top of our jar than the bottom, but that's okay as time goes on and we're gonna be outside for probably around 12 hours, things will move around. There is a little bit of space here, so I'm gonna top that off with a little more tap water. The last step is to take our lid and place it on. There might be some bubbles or air pockets in here, but since our yarn was pre-soaked, um, that means that the liquid, it'll soak up that liquid really nicely. But you can see we've got some really fun coloration. Ooh, look at those colors already. Now let's take it outside. It is shaping up to be a beautiful hot and sunny day. And we are gonna leave our jar out in the sun all day, 12 hours probably. As the sun moves across the sky, different parts of my yard will be in shade and sun, so I'll be moving the jar around as needed, but I'm gonna try not to tip or shake it. We're just gonna let it slowly warm up and absorb that warmth from the sun on a really hot day. This morning it was a little chillier, but we are supposed to hit 85 degrees Fahrenheit in New England today, which will be perfect for dyeing our yarn. And the shimmer from the Stellina is absolutely beautiful. 13 hours later and I brought this jar inside. Um, it has now completely cooled, but while I was outside it was definitely really warm to touch as it stayed in the sunlight all day. Now let's open it up and take a look at our yarn. Woohoo! The water is clear in our jar, which means that our color is in our yarn. And what beautiful color we have here. There is sort of a 
gradient of greens and blues and yellows um, with some lighter patches and darker patches in there and it is just beautiful. I just placed the yarn into some room temperature tap water so we can start washing it. Maybe I did not need to have all three colors in there, um, both of those blues, but I love the way that this turned out and the dimension of color that we got here. So, so far I am seeing no color bleeding. I'm now going to go ahead and rinse this with a tiny bit of some clear dish soap just to, as an additional check for bleeding um, and to make sure that our color is really set. If you were to start seeing some color bleeding at this point, you could go ahead, add it in some more vinegar water, let that soak a while, or even go ahead and steam set it. But our color is set, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse off the soap and hang the yarn up to dry. Here is our finished solar dyed yarn. It is so fun layering colors in a jar, so that way they randomly spread out and create a really unique pattern and by pouring some dilute color on top of all the yarn helps minimize the pastel white spots um, so allows you to get another level of dimension on your colorway and of course the final yarn is jam-packed with sparkles there are so many different variations that you can do with this solar dyeing technique and each time you set it up, the results will be slightly different. So it's just a great way to go and play with color. With a little fun in the sun, we can create some really stunning colors. Uh, see the difference that we made? No sun, no problem. You can still play around with layering colors in a mason jar indoors. Place your jar inside a water bath or maybe even in your oven at a low temperature for a long period of time to set the color. There are also a lot of ways you could vary the technique. There are so many ways that you could layer your colors on your yarn in the jar and it's honestly so much fun to play and explore. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you would like to see me play around with some more solar dyeing techniques, you can find more on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. There will be a link in the video description. The yarn base that we use today is one of my favorites. I have not found any other Stellina yarn bases that has so much as the Silvery Sock Base from Dyer Supplier. Dyer Supplier sells so many different awesome bare yarn bases beyond just this beautiful Silvery Sock. Um, so go and check out their website, dyersupplier.com, for more ethically sourced, beautiful, blank canvas for your own yarn dyeing adventures. Thank you so much for watching.